Hi class, welcome to the screencast on internal cellular structure and function. So we've already looked at the cell membrane and all of the functions that it has in its structure. Now let's dive in into the meat of the cell and really take a look at what's going on there. So what are cells? Cells are the basic unit of all life. It's the smallest thing considered to be alive and there are in fact many unicellular organisms that are just composed of one cell all around the earth. So in during understanding, we're looking at interactions within a system that lead to characteristics of that system. So we're looking at emergent properties. Remember, we already looked at this with monomers and how their interactions create polymers, the molecular level. And now we're going to look at the cell. How do all the interactions within the cell contribute to the overall function of the cell? So internal membranes. One really important feature of cells is they have these internal membranes. So just as we looked at the uh, phospholipid bilayer of the outside membrane that separates the internal and external environment for the cell, eukaryotes, not prokaryotes, but eukaryotes have internal membranes as well that partition the cell into specialized regions. So we have this compartmentalization going on of specialized regions. Three really important things that these internal membranes do. They reduce competing interactions. So they sort of separate interactions from one another so that no um, mess ups occur. Increased surface area. Uh, we talked about cell size and the importance of a large surface area for exchange of nutrients and waste. Same thing with these internal membranes. And also, they surround organelles that perform specific metabolic processes and reactions. Uh, so say, for example, a lysosome needs a very specific pH environment to work, and so that membrane does that. So internal membranes. Okay, cell types in the three domains of life. There are um, two main types of eukaryotes. They are animals and plants. And eukaryotes, again, this is a review. A lot of this uh, video actually will be review from your freshman or sophomore year bio. So eukaryotes have a nucleus, and they do have these internal membranes and these organelles. Now, prokaryotes, the other type of cell, um, do not have a nucleus. They don't have these internal membranes. They don't have organelles. And so these are your archaea and bacteria. So these are the three domains of life. One, eukaryotes, two, archaea, and three, bacteria. And we'll take a closer look at these when we do our evolution unit and how they're all connected. Um, but prokaryotes, most of them, if not all of them, do have a cell wall. So here is a figure showing the differences between eukaryotes. Here's the nucleus. Here are all the organelles. There is a plasma membrane, but there's no cell wall. Prokaryotes, they don't have a nucleus. Instead, what they have is called a nucleoid region. So this is where the DNA is kept. They do have ribosomes. They do have a plasma membrane, just like eukaryotes, but they do have this outer cell wall. Let's take a look at all of these different organelles um, that are inside eukaryotes. So first we'll look at ribosomes. Um, ribosomes are in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, and so that should tell you something about its evolution, and it also should tell you something about its important functions that it has, that it is indeed in both types of cells. Uh, they are small, universal because they're in both cell types, they're in all three domains of life, and they're composed of two interacting parts. Ribosomal RNA, so that's just a type of RNA. Remember, we learned about RNA a few weeks ago. And then that RNA interacts with protein. So these components interact uh, to become the site of protein synthesis. So that's the function. Ribosomes make proteins. So this is where translation happens, and we'll learn more about that later in the year, where the ribosome translates genetic information, the uh, nucleotides, into specific polypeptides composed of amino acids. So here's a little animation on how that works. So ribosomes combination of RNA and protein. So here's our ribosome and this is just a membrane that it's embedded in and here is our genetic information, so our nucleotide. So it's coming in, the ribosome's reading it and then it's creating the amino or it's creating the protein. So it's bringing in amino acids and creating the polypeptide. Okay, the next organelle, endoplasmic reticulum. So two types, rough and smooth. The rough is actually directly connected to the nucleus, and it's called rough because it has ribosomes studded on it, so it looks rough looking. Um, it functions in many ways. Compartmentalization of the cell, again, serves as mechanical support for the overall structure of the cell. It provides site-specific protein synthesis with those ribosomes. So um, 
It'll make proteins that are specific for the ER. And it plays a role in intracellular transport, so getting vacuoles and vesicles to where they need to go. The other type of reticulum is the smooth ER. No ribosome, so that's why we call it smooth. Um, and the smooth ER has a big job. It synthesizes all the lipids that the cell needs. So it's manufacturing all the phospholipids for all of those internal membranes of the organelles and for the outside cell membrane, that phospholipid bilayer. So important job for the smooth ER. So here we're looking at a close-up of a cell. So the nucleus is right here. We've got the nuclear envelope. We're learning about the nuclear envelope with the pores. It sort of is like a wiffle ball with the holes so that the RNA can leave the nucleus and go to the ribosome to make proteins. Directly coming off the nucleus are, is our rough ER with the embedded ribosomes. So rough ER, smooth ER, no ribosomes there. And then the next thing we're going to look at is the Golgi apparatus. So this is, a again, a membrane-bound structure of phospholipids. And it is a series of flattened sacs. And we call these sacs cisternae. So two main functions, synthesis and packaging of small molecules. So basically, from one side of the Golgi, it takes in these small molecules, it modifies them, it packages them, um, and then it's going to transport them to where they need to go, and they're going to transport the, ves or the molecules in vesicles. So they might go to somewhere inside the cell, or they might leave the cell and go to somewhere outside of the cell. And Golgi apparatus also makes lysosomes, which we'll talk about lysosomes in a second. <clears throat> so think post office when you think Golgi apparatus. So there is the Golgi apparatus, and here we have the vesicles maybe coming from the rough ER, maybe coming from the smooth ER. Uh, again, it's the interactions, right? All of these intracellular components are interacting to make the function of the cell, to make the cell work. So it comes in from one side, it gets modified, it gets uh, packaged, and then it gets sent out through the other side in a vesicle. Okay, next organelle, really important organelle, mitochondria. Mitochondria is in both plants and animal cells, and it transforms energy of organic compounds into usable ATP. So think cellular respiration. I know we haven't talked about that process in detail yet, but I hopefully you remember it from um, your freshman year biology. So let's take a look at this picture here. This is an overview of what cellular respiration is and what mitochondria does uh, for us. So here we have a heterotroph, um, and it's going to take in oxygen from the atmosphere. It's going to breathe that in. It's also going to eat organic compounds. And the mitochondria take all of these things, the glucose and the oxygen, and it transforms it into ATP, and then it also makes water and carbon dioxide that we release um, as we exhale. So, and what is creating all of these things? Well, it's the plants. It's the autotrophs that are creating the organic compounds we eat and the air that we breathe. So let's take a closer look at the mitochondria and the structure of it. So it does have a double membrane, and we'll talk about the significance of that when we talk about evolution, um, but it functions to compartmentalize the different re reactions going on in the mitochondria. So smooth outer membrane and the inner membrane, as we can see right here, is highly folded. So what does this do? High folding. It increases the surface area. Hopefully you thought of that, so that more interactions and more reactions can take place in a smaller volume. So these cristae contain enzymes to make ATP, and so increase surface area for ATP production. Within the cristae, we have this region called the matrix, and then in between the cristae and the um, inner membrane is the inner membrane space. And so we'll want to know more about these features when we do talk about cellular respiration, which is what mitochondria does. All right, lysosomes, I said I'd get back to these. These are membrane-enclosed sacs that contain hydrolytic enzymes. So enzymes, they're going to break things apart. So they're going to digest um, any cellular food. They're also going to be really important in recycling a cell's organic material. Maybe organelles are old or they're not functioning anymore or they were injured. Well, a lysosome is going to recycle those organelle parts, those atoms and molecules, and make them reusable for something else. Lysosomes are also a really important part of programmed cell death, which is called apoptosis. So there are times in a cell's life where it has just come to its end, and it needs to sort of die. And it, 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 that's okay. It's programmed cell death. There are molecules, there are signals that are released, and a lysosome is going to sort of destroy the cell, if you will. 
Okay, vacuoles, um, many different types of vacuoles um, in eukaryotic cells, but in general, uh, they're membrane bound. They do also help in intracellular digestion, and they are very important in releasing cellular waste. So they'll get that big bulky waste, and then they'll take it um, to the cell membrane through exocytosis and get rid of it. Remember learning about bulk transport. Now there are plant-specific vacuoles. Um, so these vacuoles function to store pigments or poisonous substances if it's a poisonous plant. They help in cell growth. And then the large central vacuole is really important for um, holding water, so large surface area to volume ratio for water storage of plants. So here is our sort of general animal cell. Here is our nucleus. Inside we have the nucleolus. We have our rough ER, our smoothie, our smooth ER, our Golgi apparatus, our flattened sacs of cisternae, uh, vacuoles and lysosomes, and we have our mitochondria. Okay, chloroplasts are plant specific. They're only found in algae and higher plants. Their function is photosynthesis. So they capture sunlight energy and convert it to the energy of chemical bonds in the form of carbohydrates like glucose, for example. And then heterotrophs consume that as a part of our cellular respiration. Structure fits function. So chloroplasts contain a pigment called chlorophyll. So the pigment is what is actually trapping the sunlight and it also makes plants green. So let's take a closer look at the structure of a chloroplast. Again, we'll look more at this when we talk about photosynthesis, but it does have a double membrane again, so outer membrane, inner membrane space, inner membrane. And um, we have the thylakoids, which are where the light reactions take place. So these are just stacks of thylakoids. And we call the stacks granum. And then the fluid inside is called stroma, and this is where the carbon fixation process of photosynthesis occurs. But we'll talk more about that in photosynthesis. So that does it for kind of diving into inside of the cell. I know I went kind of fast, but I know that all of that you already learned a few years ago in biology. So this is going to be a quick review of these organelles, their structures, and their functions. I do have a questions on this slide, so write these down and answer these in your notes. And then two more questions on this slide.